Hey everybody, I'm Howard, and this is Otto's Retirement Corner. So last video I did was about the Harris-Trump debate, and I want to respond to the kind of comments I got. Um, as, as, it was, as was probably predictable, because I talked about political figures, the comments became very political, very partisan, and unfortunately, very dishonest. Um, you know, all day, every day, I read comments on other YouTube channels and, you know, especially Yahoo, where, you know, there's this great divide between Republicans and Democrats, and you, you get some very far extreme viewpoints, which are typically based upon myths, lies, and conspiracy theories. And, you know, they bother me, but there's not much I can do about it. So this started to leak into my channel with the comments from last time, so I wanted to address one of the topics, and there, there's several, but one of the topics that, that sort of came up over and over was immigration. And, and I know when I talk about immigration, I'm going to get some really great comments, and that's okay. And here's what I want to say about those comments. Give me your comments. If you want to criticize me or present a different side, that's fine. Be polite. You know, if you're not, I'm, you know, I'm not going to erase it, but, you know, if we want to have discussions and get at the real facts and details and issues, let's have a real discussion. If you ask me questions and I answer them and I ask you questions, I'd like you to answer them, not just throw things against the wall and say, here's what's happening, here's what it is, and then I question it and you just go on to the next thing. I'm seeing too much of that. I want on my channel to have pleasant, intelligent discussions about real things. So, you know, I did a little pushback on a lot of the comments about what I thought felt was the real facts or the real issues or, you know, the idea that some of the things being said on there were unproven or lies or, or just conspiracy theories. So let, let's talk very quickly about immigration. And you know, I was going to give you all sorts of facts and numbers and details, but I actually stumbled upon a great YouTube video. I'm going to link it down below. And I would encourage you, even if you only listen to 30 seconds of this, to go to this video because it gives facts and details and it's not very long. And it'll clear up a lot of misconceptions. And the, the, the site is called USA Facts. It's a nonprofit, nonpartisan group started by Steve Ballmer, who started Microsoft. And he doesn't give political opinions, he doesn't criticize, he gives the numbers and the facts. And he doesn't on several topics, but he just recently did this one in immigration. Please go and watch that one. So anyway, you know, the, the, the one myth that really ticks me off more than anything is open borders. You know, Democrats want, op want and have and have opened the borders. Well, there's nothing, there's nothing further from the truth. It, it just simply doesn't happen. There's no open border policy. There are no open borders. We haven't changed anything from the last administration to this administration as far as our borders. We still have walls. We still have the same fences. We haven't taken down any of these. You know, we still have 22,000 border security people. Uh, you know, we haven't built any bridges or put any holes in the walls for people to come over. We're not asking people to come over. We're not turning our backs and letting them come over. There's no such thing as open borders or an open border policy. The other thing that was quite common was the <laughs> characterization of Kamala Harris, Kamala Harris, I'm sorry, as a border czar. There was no already position called border czar. Uh, you know, that's the, partially in the media, partially Republicans gave her that title. The, she was tasked by, by Biden with talking to Central American country leaders about ways to stem the flow of people from those countries to the U.S. Not very much came of that. You know, if you want to say she wasn't successful in that, I, I'd probably have to agree with you. Um, you know, the, the, the problems are so systemic in those countries, the violence, the drugs, the, the lawlessness, you know, those people are going to continue to yearn to be here. And, and, and that's going to be hard to stop. Maybe, you know, maybe we can work out something with them. Uh, you know, nothing substantive came from that. So if you want to criticize Harris for that, that's fine. Um, you know, that, that never really amounted to anything. So, 
Here's a couple differences in, in what we do at the border now. The, the one thing that actually changed from Trump to Biden was Trump's stay in Mexico policy or remain in Mexico policy. And that was where people were waiting for asylum hearings. He wanted them to stay in Mexico instead of the U.S. Well, Democrats and especially Biden and, and a lot of human rights groups thought that was inhumane because these people were being taken advantage of. They're being preyed upon, um, you know, drug, sex trafficking, violence. Um, so, so Biden lifted that and, you know, went to courts and, you know, courts decided that, yes, legally he can lift that. So instead of those people remaining in Mexico, they're in the U.S. And again, go to Steve Ballmer's uh, video, again, that I've linked down below. He'll talk about the, these processes. And if there's anything to blame, it's the processes. And, and there's not a lot we can do about it, but there, there are some things. Um, you know, the other thing that recently changed is in June of 24, Biden put out an executive order limiting asylum applications. When anyone entered the U.S. and they were seeking asylum, they were allowed to stay in the U.S. legally. They were not considered here illegally. They were here legally until their asylum court case. Now, unfortunately, court cases are backed up for years. So in essence, it was a two to three year free stay in the U.S. And then hopefully they make their asylum hearing. Um, you know, the one thing we could do, one of the things we can do to help the immigration problem is um, more, more, more courts, more, more judges, more processing. They, they, they do such a tiny fraction every year that, you know, it, 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 the, the caseload just builds endlessly. Um, so, you know, what, what Biden's asylum law was, um, if you come in through a border crossing, a regular border crossing, you can seek asylum. If you sneak through, through, you know, over a wall, under a wall, around a wall, a fence, whatever, swim over the Rio Grande, you know, come up through the oceans, fly in, whatever it is, if you're seeking asylum that way, illegally, you're going to be sent back. And that, that, that did a lot to stem the recent trend. Uh, but those really are the only two things that change. There are no open borders. If you want to argue this, please argue it, but do it thoughtfully and stick to the facts. All right. So, you know, and, and Steve Ballmer points this out again, that there's, there's U.S. laws back in the 60s and there's U.N. laws as far as refugees and asylum that address what we must do with these people that cross. And most of the time it's they stay in the U.S. And if they're here illegally, they get a court date and they have to come back to the court date. They don't always do so, just like asylum seekers. You know, there's also, you know, hundreds of thousands of visas. There's travel visas, there's student visas, there's work visas, there's tourism visas, visas you know, whatever the visa is, people get them, come over, and they stay past the end of the visa. You know, there's just not enough people to chase them down and return them. Um, you know, so, you know, if, if you want to get on your Congress people and Senate uh, representatives, do that. You know, if we change the law some, maybe, you know, we can figure out a way to not keep these people in the U.S. and, and end that. And, and the last thing I want to address here is just the ridiculous, absurd stories about Springfield, Ohio. And... This will make some of you mad, but that's fine because it's ridiculous. I go to the powers to say it's stupid. Um, you know, the absurdity of it. Um, the fact is, you know, there were about 60,000 people in Springfield, Ohio. They were building a huge, huge manufacturing base. Several factories opened. They needed workers. At the same time, there were some really horrible thing going on in Haiti and there's some Haiti refugees and they were given legal status to stay in the U.S. And those two things combined and, you know, the mayor of Springfield said, hey, we need some of those people come here and work. And they went there. 20,000 roughly went there. You know, so they went from 60,000 population to 80,000 population. And whenever you do that to a city, you're going to overtax the infrastructure. You know, travel and traffic got horrible. Hospitals were backed up. Schools were overloaded. You know, crime ticked a little. But again, <laughs> illegal immigration and legal immigration 
does not increase our crime rate. It actually lowers it because they, incre- they, they commit crimes at a lower rate. And it's just a fact, all right? Um, let me go off on one tangent here. You know, I often see people telling me about, oh, so-and-so got murdered. Somebody here was illegally, bounced out twice, kept coming back. They killed a, a woman and her three children. Yeah, it's horrific. It's absolutely horrific. You know, but there's 21, 22,000 murders in the U.S. every year. To point to one or two murders that were committed high profile by somebody here illegally does not make your case for immigration or illegal immigration being a bigger crime problem than the crime we already have in the U.S. There's 20,000 of those stories every year, and they're heartbreaking and they're wrong, and the criminals need to be prosecuted, but don't make it an immigration case. It simply isn't. All right, so so back to Springfield. Um, you know, the story about them eating people's cats and dogs and whatever, you know, everyone in that city has denied it. Uh, you know, J.D. Vance came out and said, yeah, well, my constituents were calling me and telling me these stories. Well, before you just repeat them, and I know why you did it, you did it for political purposes, but you know, if, if you really thought they were true, did you try to corroborate them? Did you call the city manager, the mayor, the police in Springfield to say, are these things happening? Because they all would have told you, no, they're not. So you know, if, if those 20,000 people had been white Christians from Connecticut, that for whatever reason, you know, moved in that town, would we be hearing these stories about eating cats and, you know, whatever? No. Would traffic be as bad? Yes. Would hospitals be overloaded? Yes. Would, you know, county and city services be overloaded? Yes. You know, unemployment there is 5% right now. They increased their population by one third and unemployment's only 5%. Let's not blame Haitians or immigration for whatever little problems they have in Springfield. And let's not make up stupid stories. So that's my take on it. Bring on the comments. <laughs> you, know, I, you know, I might attack some of the other myths I've been hearing and stories outside of immigration. But that's it for today. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Subscribe if you like this controversial stuff. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.